What is up, Madden 25 gamers? In today's blitz, or excuse me, not blitz of the day, today's uh, great debate of the week, we're going to be taking a look at the best wide receiver in Madden NFL 25. We're going to break down two ratings, and we're going to take a look at is... For Madden, the way the game works, is this receiver the best receiver? Is is this other receiver better? You guys are going to compare two players, and we'll see what you guys think. So the first player that I wanted to show you guys was obviously Megatron for the Detroit Lions has to be in our you know at least in the discussion for greatest receiver in in Madden, especially with his uh, improved. I think he's he just gets better every year with this six foot five frame, two thirty six. Uh, the dude's going to be able to out just physically much better than any corner that can cover him uh, anybody that tries to do anything against Megatron they won't be able to physically match up and with his seven, with his 95 speed rating it makes him a, a viable deep threat I mean he can beat corners just with his pure speed and I think that that's one of the biggest reasons why Megatron is uh, often thought of thought as thought of as the best receiver in the game with his agility acceleration is uh, just off the charts physical physical attributes um, 94 catching the traffic I'd like to see that go up in my opinion I think he's better than that uh, in the real NFL I don't understand why he's only 94 in the game uh, 96 route running I think that's about right catching it is 97 uh, obviously really good 99 spectacular catch I think that's exactly right 99 release uh, 98 jump I don't know why it's not 99 but uh, this guy is just an absolute stud of the game. And then some other receivers I wanted to show you that I think could be a viable, maybe a viable comparison or at least a rival uh, with Calvin as, as, as thought of as the best receiver in the game. I think we have to, in Madden, and this is for Madden only, I think we have to take into account Percy Harvin from the Seattle Seahawks. Now, obviously, this throw, we're throwing out the injury rating. We're throwing out the fumble. We're throwing out all of that. We're just taking a look at is if he could start every game, if he could play every game for you, if you had one game to come down to, who would you go with, with Calvin Megatron based off of the way Madden plays this year? And uh, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to make an argument for Percy Harvin. He's got 96 speed, which is one point higher. He's got better agility than... Uh, than Calvin Johnson has. He has better acceleration than Calvin Johnson has. He, he's just a better overall, in terms of physically, just a faster, more agile version of him. He still has decent catch in traffic, obviously not off the charts like Calvin was, not off the charts. Spectacular catch. The release probably hurts him, but used in the slot, I think Percy Harvin is one of the better uh, slot receivers in the game, if not the best. Especially for Madden because of the speed and the, the way he can run in the open field. He's going to be able to elude those tacklers. Um, obviously, we can't ignore Andre Johnson over at Houston. But I think his speed rating keeps him out of that comparison uh, with Calvin Johnson. I think that, you know, obviously his awareness, which is good because he's going to get open against, you know, lesser corners. And these, these ratings right here, what I really like is this uh, 98 catch in traffic. I think that is something that Andre Johnson brings to the table. But again, his speed rating kind of takes him out of the comparison uh, for top tier uh, wide receivers. Um, the next best thing to Calvin Johnson, I think, in the game is uh, none other than Brandon Marshall. And uh, Brandon Marshall doesn't have the, quite the speed that Calvin Johnson has, but he does have similar physical attributes in terms of strength, size, and acceleration. And then the, what I really like about uh, Brandon Marshall a little bit better than Calvin Johnson is that 98 catch and traffic rating. The catch, catch and traffic is so important in this game because a lot of times you're going to, for some reason the corners don't always play certain routes in this game, so they rely on catch tackles to break up passes. Well, if you have a high catch and traffic rating like Calvin Johnson has, or excuse me, like Brandon Marshall has, Calvin Johnson has a very good one, just not as high as Brandon Marshall, you're going to catch balls that typically maybe drop by a guy like, say, Devin Hester with only 69 catch and traffic, or Ashawn Jeffrey even with 81. So just keep that in mind. Another receiver I think we have to compare, at least talk about, is A.J. Green. Again, similar size factor, um, similar attributes here, uh, not as good as Calvin in any of these categories. What I think I like about A.J. Green, though, is this uh, spin move and juke move 
vision, elusiveness, the, the acceleration is there, the agility is there, and he has better teammates than Calvin Johnson. Remember, that needs to be taken into consideration as well with a guy like Josh Johnson who can get loose in the open field, uh, guys like Andrew Hawkins, Jermaine Gresham, and, and uh, their rookie tight end Tyler Eifert. They just have a lot more weapons, in my opinion, at their disposal. That doesn't mean that A.J. Green's necessarily a better receiver, but it may be better to use the Bengals than the Lions. Okay, And then lastly, the last receiver I wanted to talk about in today's debate is, is there a possibility that uh, Wes Welker could be considered a top-notch target in Band 25? He's playing with Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker on the outside, so it's going to allow him to be a slot receiver, which is what he's so good at. And remember, speed is low, and that's why I say Percy Harvin is probably a better suit. But overall, I'm going to have to say uh, Wes Walker is at least a top-notch receiver. And 85 speed is not great, but what, once again, what I want to focus on is there's other assets to affect what Wes Walker has is quickness. What Percy Harvin has is speed. And so with this 96 agility rating, he's going to be able to just lose defenders in the dust. 98 acceleration, he's going to be able to get to top speed faster, which means he's going to be able to turn 5-yard catches into you know, 20, 30-yard uh, plays. 5'9", 185, that's really good. Do not doubt the fact that small players are very hard to tackle in this game. Um, you know, elusiveness is there, vision is there. What I really like about Wes Welker is this 98 catch and traffic rating means he's not going to drop balls. Him being in the slot uh, receiver position, meaning he's not going to have to deal with press coverage. So as far as his position goes, I think Wes Welker is probably a, uh, a top five receiver in this game for what we're going to use him for. And remember, every receiver can be great in your offense if you're using them in the right way. So... Even though he doesn't have a 90 overall, uh, 90 or higher spectacular catch, the route running, the catching traffic's there. We're just going to have to hit him uh, coming across the middle of the field, which is why I think suits him perfectly for our Giants offensive scheme of the week and also the scheme of the week we're breaking down this week uh, with the Broncos. I believe we're using the... I think we're using the Cowboys playbook. So, so uh, Wes Welker certainly will be featured in these schemes. But, but guys, just remember when, when picking your team, what quarterback do they have, what receivers do they have. I think it's important to analyze some of the deeper ratings like catch and traffic and uh, release and stuff like that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you who I actually think is the best receiver in the game. Uh, as far as the best receiver in the game, uh, it has to be Calvin Johnson just because there's just so many things he does great. There are four uh, viable options that could compare. Obviously, you can't ignore what's going on in uh, San Francisco with Crabtree and Bolden uh, when both healthy are just dominant on the outside. As far as top-notch receiving core, best receiving core, best team, I think that the Denver Broncos have the best receiving core in the game because they have two big targets on the outside, and they have Wes Welker, who, in my opinion, is the best uh, to ever do it at the slot position, in my opinion, just a phenomenal target and can do it all for us. Uh, obviously, since uh, obviously uh, Seattle with Harvin for Madden purposes, maybe a little bit better, but uh, you can't ignore also with Denver with the tied ends they have um, as far as best receiving core. So best receiving core would have to go to Denver, but best overall receiver would have to go to Seattle. So if you guys like this, leave your comments. Who do you think the best receiver in Madden is, and who do you think the best receiving core in Madden is? Uh, let me know and leave your comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to share it on Twitter, and we'll get some discussion going on about who you guys really think the best in the game is. But I think bar none, the best to ever, I think probably by the time his career is over, one of the best receivers to ever do it, Calvin Johnson, has to take the top-notch receiver in Madden 25. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned to next week where we're going to talk about the best linebacker in Madden 25.